Welcome to the Toe Business Podcast, your number one source for information on training, safety, business management, and everything in between. There's no business like Toe Business. Here's your hosts, Jeff and Brad. Hey, the uh, Toe Business Podcast is back at Miller. You remember we were here a few weeks ago for that uh, that lift with the M100. Pretty impressive. Uh, we're back here again to do another show. And this time we're going to answer some of the questions around the event. As, as big a deal as that truck was, uh, there's been a lot of questions about the event and how they managed to pull all that off in such secrecy. Uh, so we're going to get into that a little bit today. Um, Kip, a few weeks ago, uh, you talked about a, uh, a giveaway that you guys were doing. You want to want to get into that for a minute? Yeah, so we uh, partnered with uh, DP Winch on the um, Facebook post. And uh, if you shared or commented on the video, you're entered to win. So um, we had tremendous response on that. So uh, here at the end of this uh, episode, we'll, uh, we've will we already got the 10 names drawn. And uh, one of us will read them out. And then we'll contact those people and get their uh, their shirts to them. So thanks again to DP Winch for helping us out on that. It's um, fun to see that kind of grow on social media and spread and uh, getting people outside the industry to kind of comment and say, hey, slow down, move over. So um, appreciate those people who did that for us as well. Absolutely. Uh, you want to go around the room real quick and let everybody know who's here? Yeah, first, uh, Billy Drain, uh, Director of uh, Heavy Duty Equipment here at Miller Industries. Uh, Kip Felice, Vice President of Marketing and Business Solutions. I've uh, been here about 15 years. So, And Todd Harless. I'm uh, one of our marketing managers here at Miller. And myself, John Hawkins, uh, VP of Heavy Duty Sales. Um, here probably way too long <laughs> and i gotta i gotta say hey he's not on screen but joseph keen is in the room helping us produce this uh, he's our other marketing manager and he was uh, instrumental as well as putting the uh, m100 event on with uh, todd and some other help we had as well so absolutely i think everybody really enjoyed those videos and it kind of filled a little hole where the where the toe show was supposed to be so yeah we definitely appreciate you guys doing that and we definitely appreciate you having us back here today um the show, the M100 unveiling, the first private unveiling uh, in our industry, I believe. And it, for well, anybody, well, John's the history book, so okay. I, I don't. You know, th there there hasn't been an, an unveil for one specific thing. I'm sure that during the Holmes days, uh, for some of the Indy cars, uh, I remember Century doing the um, uh, Olympic units. That there were you know times for that, but nothing ever of this type of caliber specifically drawn to one one specific you know one item. Yeah, since my tenure here, we've always done something at a trade show, and um, you know before we we decided eventually on, on doing a private was we had a lot of discussions of hey what should we do shouldn't do and some of it was based on when the truck was going to be done we knew if it was done too early we all like to share stuff to our special friends who come in town so we we're like well if we get done too early sitting there people are gonna go down there and see it and then maybe it steals some thunder um so we kind of said hey let's uh, let's try it and then at that point it was where do we do it you know um we discussed Chattanooga initially, and then we said, hey, logistically, you know, is it better to do it in a Charlotte, Nashville, Atlanta? Um, we uh, actually, Joseph and I went down to Atlanta for a full day, and we looked at the uh, the, the Delta Flight Museum. We, we got some feedback from some customers that did some charity events there, and uh, impressive, impressive facility. Um, it was just, I mean, grandiose, like the, the, the building we ended up uh, here in Chattanooga. And uh, we also went to, I think, the State Farm Arena now. And then uh, we so went. So if it was big enough for planes, it'd be big enough for tow trucks? <laughs> That's what we were thinking. Um, I mean, it was a huge pad out front that we could do a de demonstration on. It still limited us to uh, some of that weather aspect of if you do an event outside that you got to have kind of plan B. Um, and uh, then we, you know, we, we toured some places here in Chattanooga. And we uh, went down to the riverfront. Um, I don't know if uh, John's got a contact down there at the piece of property. I'm gonna pull it up here on the screen. Um, if you want to tell him a little bit about the property, John. Well, you know, we were looking at the uh, the, the property right across from uh, the aquarium. Uh, River Bend Festival uh, is held there each year, and and it would have lend a great venue as far as having the backdrop of the city of Chattanooga in there. But like Kip, what you mentioned is is as we looked at this outdoors with the tent, bringing in the porta potties and everything, and then 
even though we ended up doing October 1st, it was like 94 outside. It was record breaking. Yeah, we had a It would have not been a very good environment. So even though we were really close to pulling the plug, I mean, pulling uh, this location and making it, we just kept looking further and further and further. And then came... You found... Yeah. Or you were talking to Tim about... Yeah. Some private party he had done. Right. And and Tim, who had done a lot of our marketing before and did a lot of the video shoots uh, when we were doing the test uh, for the M100 and was part of the production crew, he mentioned about his wife going to this venue downtown on the waterfront just around the bend from this picture that you're seeing right here. And uh, that's when I went and got with Todd and Joseph and Kip and say, hey, we got to check this out, see what it's like. So, and, so quick question. When you were trying to decide on locations, did uh, did the worry of people seeing it getting from point A to point B, did that factor into the decision at all? Did that come up? We traveled at night. We did. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, back and forth up to here a bunch, too. Yeah, yeah early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. yeah. But you, you're right. It, it, being outside, and even if we did that outside venue, you know, bringing the truck in beforehand and putting it in the back corner of that lot, it was like, well, people are going to go over there. How do we get people to stay over here? So, um, but then I think all, you know, there was four or five of us that went down to this, um, the, it was the old Alstom, Alstom. Mm -hmm. Alstom factory. Um, it's been vacant for a little while now. There's actually a group trying to sell it and they're repurposing most of the property. Um, you know, we walked in there, we're like, wow, this is just, it, it's massive, it's huge, it's, you know, it's, now the question was, is it what we need? Um, there was still some logistic stuff, but uh, the more and more we brainstormed it here, it, it's like, it, this has got to be it. So, we, we needed a, a facility that when we ran that boom because of the overall 45, I mean, 54 foot of boom reach, we needed to be able to have something that we could show that with. And this facility had that plus. So it was almost like if we can justify the cost, this is where we got to go. Mm -hmm. And it just had a lot of that background with all the overhead cranes and everything in there. It was oh, just yeah. the steel, yeah, yeah. And, and it, that industrial, industrial look feel. just right. really mm -hmm. lent itself well. Um, so, so where did the uh, the code name Big Blue come from? So, I, I think the internet frenzy after the event thought Big Blue was the truck. Um, so there was secrecy about where we were hosting the event. Even our own employees that attended it um, from from the Chattanooga market, or even um, our reps that flew in. We didn't want anyone knowing where it was. We actually had our employees park at the hotels that all the guests stayed at and ride the shuttles over. I think there was probably about 20 people total that actually parked at the event, and most of that was the marketing or heavy duty team. Um, so we were talking to this guy, um, Stacy, who, who still runs the facility down there on the maintenance side. And we'll talk more about him in a minute, but uh, I think he told us, hey, most of the people here used to just call it Big Blue. And so we, were, we did some internet searches and if you do hashtag big blue or anything big blue nothing came up so we're like oh that's the event venue it's big blue because nobody can find it so uh that's kind of where it came from it wasn't a truck but now everybody's calling uh mr petrov's truck big blue so it's kind of kind of comical so well, so i uh i really was unsure that night which one was big blue uh i mean, obviously the truck was very big and very blue. But the next day, I ended up going up, uh, I guess it was Lookout Mountain, and I had a view down onto the building. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it kind of kind of hit me. I realized what Big Blue really was, so that was pretty neat. Well, you also got to remember that during the build for the unit, we had just moved into the R&D facility, which was off-site. And that was one of the key things that as we had distribution, because it was kind of known that we were going to be or we're doing something and people would want to come and walk the 31 acres that we had here trying to find it. <laughs> so. Yeah, it reminded me, so when we did the 1150R back in 14, yeah. you know, we had a, a tarped area off and, and, and everyone always, if you tarp anything in this facility, everyone wants to look behind the tarp to see what you're doing. Right. I fell for it. So <laughs> when we were going to a new, you know, when we had the R&D center that we had moved it to, it was like when you were taking people through the plant, doing plant tours, you didn't have to worry about them looking through the tarp because there, was, there wasn't anything here. And everyone would ask, well, where is that? Where's the truck? What are you talking about? Yeah. We're not, I mean, we're not, I've took you on every 
four hundred thousand square foot of buildings around here. I mean, what what do you want me to show you? There's nothing here. Especially some of our distribution were very investigative. So, yeah. and the R and D was uh, gated, and uh, you know, access to it was absolutely limited. Uh, we also had our moved our repair facility down there, and all the repairs were brought up here and then transported. So, you know, there was no access to this facility, and local towers that uh, were denied that. You know, we had a, it was a very fine line that we walked for about eight months. Very fine. So now, when you when you did finally decide on the location, I can't imagine the amount of work that went into getting that facility ready. I'm sure it wasn't showroom ready, clean, um, all the facilities ready to go. Can you give us a little insight on the magnitude of work that went into getting that facility ready? So you would be surprised. Um, we walked in there, and you would have thought they had just cleaned that building the day before. Um, really? There was some leftover glitter from that. that <laughs> party that Tim <laughs> Yeah, party. It, was, it was a charity <laughs> event for some arts project. But uh, So there was some glitter on the floor, but you would have thought that it was, you know, had been cleaned within a week or something like that. Um, now, obviously, you know, when we bring up some of these pictures for everybody watching, you'll see that all the stuff had to bring in. But that's any event space. You're going to have to bring in a lot of stuff as well. So... Um, we, we really just walked in and said, man, there's, mm -hmm. there's um, four or five bays, but um, bay, bay 32 is the main event space where we had the keynote speech. Uh, we had all the food and all the refreshments. And then bay 31 was halfway in between, which we didn't really do much in that space. And bay 30 was the demo bay. And the demo bay, all, we just used the house lighting and brought in our own trucks and then just a PA over there. Um, Bay 32 it did did require a bunch of um, setup with uh, the, a local AV company here, and so these, those guys were spot on. They knew exactly what we wanted, and 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 um, actually did a couple of things we weren't even planning on. So it, it turned out really good. Well, I think the first thing that we saw that when we went into that facility was the test room. You know where they pressurized the the, the concepts that they were building there, the Alstrom building, and and we just looked at that. And uh, you're seeing the, the picture of it right there. What could we do with this? <laughs> yeah, but at that time, um, this gentleman, Stacy, he, he didn't even know if we could use that room. They no. use it as like a dance floor or something like that. Right, uh, yeah. The, yeah, if the door was even functional, if the, if the ramp would, would function, um, it, was, uh, it was really questionable, especially there in the beginning. So he, he said, hey, I might know the old electrician. Let me call him. <laughs> I don't know. It was like two months later. He he called Todd and said, "I got the door to got work." The door to work, right? <laughs> How confident are you? <laughs> he goes, "Well, it is hydraulic, and it hasn't been used in a long time." So, uh, we went down there with um, we got the measurements. We had all the blueprints from the floor schematics. Um, we went down there with uh, Mike Frazier, drove one of the, just a chassis down there, and we did some measurements of the of the rails. Um, and we backed the truck in, and, and Stacy was like, "Well, is this a truck?" We're like, "No, but it's very similar in size, wheelbase, mm -hmm. width." And so um, we we asked him, "Hey, what are these railroad tracks rated for?" And um, oh, he's like, uh, "A couple hundred thousand pounds right. each." We're like, "Oh, well, we're we're, we're good then." So um, the truck fit right on there, um, the same width as the, the inside tires of the of the unit. And so um, yeah, I think it was sixty feet long, so we had plenty of depth. And he got the door to work. Um, you'll see during the uh, I was the event pictures. That, I mean, once that door opened and the gate went down and that truck just came on this side of the concrete, all the weight lifted off our shoulders. Because oh, yeah. could you imagine just that door stopping halfway through with a thousand, twelve hundred people in attendance trying to see a truck? And there's no way for us to open that door. You know, I don't know how much that door weighed, but it was several feet thick. Um, so. So, so something I didn't, I didn't think about until the other day, I, I believe you mentioned it. it. Mike had to go in that room completely dark, huh? He was in there sealed up, pitch black. By himself. By himself. <laughs> With a radio. <laughs> One, wondering, wondering if the door was even going to open. <laughs> yeah, we, um, you know, we, we had moved it, the truck in there a couple hours before that. And uh, funny story, all our reps came in the day of or the day before, but they did a walkthrough only two hours before they arrived. And... Uh, we actually had a dummy truck, so if you were looking at the stage, on the left-hand side of the stage was a huge yellow roll-up door, and we had taken an 1150 or 1140 and put it over there, and we bought a huge black tarp and tarped it up. <laughs> and then on the uh, the right-hand side was the, was the chamber, but even our reps didn't know 
that chamber was functional or anything about it. And we just said, hey, that's we're, we're practicing right now. The M100 is not even here, but that's how it's going to be. That's our setup truck. And so our reps even thought it was going to come out the yellow door. So, um, but yeah, so he climbed in the back. There was, um, if, when you came into the event, the entrance, that was the back side of that chamber. And there was a door, uh, like a porthole door in the ship that you actually walked through and climb in. And uh, he had a flashlight and climbed in that truck and he was just waiting. And we had everything timed out, you know, when we started that video with uh, the build process and, and the engineering team, what they did. He knew that door was going to open up two minutes into that video and then four minutes into that video, he needed to turn the truck on and stuff like that. So uh, we wanted people to kind of, I think Jeff... Todd and I both saw your reaction at the event, so we wanted that reaction, and only the people up front really could see that, but it was, it was funny to see, and everything was kind of choreographed in that aspect. It was funny because I was, I was glued to the left. I was waiting for that tarped up truck to come through that door, and uh, I, I was so focused on that door, uh, all of a sudden I, I feel my son start hitting me in the back, and, he, and I'm like, oh, leave me alone, leave me alone. And uh, finally, he gets me to turn around. I, I noticed the doors opening up, and that, that was that was pretty awesome. That was great. That was great to be able to watch that spread through the crowd too. You know, as people caught on to that door opening up, and the truck really coming from the, you know from this side rather than the the yellow roll up door. That was really really cool to be able to watch the you know their reactions. Well, the, through the, crowd. the music that was that started to play as Joel was up on stage and you know was uh, getting and, and the door was opening. We were worried about the sound. You know, people mm -hmm. would have to hear that door. But they didn't, and uh, I sit here right now, and 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 talking into this microphone, I get goosebumps. Just the pounding of the music that was started when you know the truck started and it came up, and everybody, you you thought it was Richard Pryor back on stage with the cigarette <laughs> lighters going with all the cell phones. Nobody's just listening to this podcast now. Who's Richard Pryor? <laughs> <laughs> You're dating me. You're it dating like me. Like an Aerosmith concert. <laughs> Yeah. So, so back back to timing and the completion of the truck. How close did that get? Like when <laughs> when the truck was. <laughs> that's why I'm asking. Well, you know, it was a it was a very tight knit uh, group that we were for that decision where Will Hadley had to work with Kip and finally say that hey the invitations have got to go out. We've got this much work. There's going to take so many you know weeks of timing for us to do it. And we had to line that in with engineering, and we had to pick that date, and that date was October 1st, and we probably had 70-some-odd days of preparation from when we actually picked October 1st to go. So everything then geared on October 1, without fail. Once those invitations went, some thousand people paid their own way to come and watch this largest unveil in the history of towing and recovery and fly into Chattanooga for that event from everywhere from you know Japan and South Africa and Australia it was just uh, it had to happen yeah. there was no missing the boat at that time so about the invitations yeah yeah <laughs> um, Todd why don't you tell them about the oh, invitations yeah. yeah those the invitations um, yeah you know we uh, we, we used a, a local uh, company here in town and unfortunately we did have issues with the the postal service um, you know they, they were mailed on time they assured me that everything went out on time uh, but but something, uh, there was a little hiccup with the postal service, and unfortunately, there were uh, a few that didn't quite arrive on time. But we um, we still received just an incredibly overwhelming response. Uh, so I, I think there were some people in Georgia that got them a week after we mailed them out, mm -hmm. and there was people in Georgia that got them three days before the event. Uh, it didn't make, it any, didn't make sense. any sense. At all. We um, we did we we did get notified of the situation just from the responses early on. So we. Um, we got with our, our district sales managers and distribution and contacted by phone all the uh, invitees to make sure. And some of them, yeah, they sure enough hadn't gotten them. So um, we had a digital copy and we sent that and kind of worked through the process. But, you know, mm -hmm. you, it just shows you you can plan everything to a T and that one little glitch of something you cannot control. And you got to have plan B to kind of call the audible and, and get it done. So, so it sounds like you guys just enjoy lumping stressful stressful uh stress on top of stress there because that that had to be a, a gamble sending out invites with no idea who was going to be willing to travel how far and come to the event right? sure yeah we had no idea i think originally we were, when we were planning with uh, uh you know catering and other vendors 
uh, early on, we're thinking, you know, maybe 300, 400, 500. And then we, uh, as, as the RSVPs continue to roll in, <laughs> well, maybe 500, 600, 700. Well, now we're probably looking at over 1,000, you know, suddenly. So. <clears throat> yeah, then to Todd's point, the, um, the biggest thing was the, the food and the caterer here in town. She, um, she had no problem. She does huge events. So if it was something as small as 200 up to probably 4,000, she was comfortable with. Um, and then the event venue itself, because it was so large, you know, we just, we kind of designed these um, modules and, you know, there was a bar and there was, you know, tables and all that stuff. And we just kept updating our, our information with the, uh, the decorator and we said, hey, we need another module that will fit 100 people or 150 people. So. Mm -hmm. They just kind of kept securing more furniture, and we just, as we grew, they grew with us. So um, it was a good support from local businesses here in Chattanooga, and um, I think they were floored what we were doing. And the, I mean, the, the towing industry to them was completely they, oblivious, and they're like, "Wow, these many people are coming to come see a truck." Yeah, and we were like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> from and all so, over. Uh, now we did have a couple hundred people that were vendors, partners, um, supporters of us on the. Uh, <laughs> All of our chassis suppliers sent in their corporate management, um, you know, from Hino International Freightliner to the Packard, to Kenworth, to Peterbilt. So they came and supported us. Obviously, DP Winch, Ashley Slang, Samard. Uh, the list goes on and yeah, on. The, the people who you guys wouldn't even know that supply components on the truck that you'll never see, they all came in. Plus our distribution and some of their sales personnel as well. So, and we had to somewhat limit that you know, inside group and, and, you know, we were really stressed to people, uh, that when, when the invites went out, uh, it was not knowing what was going to be the overall number. And, you know, as we were working towards that and a lot of energy went out, uh, on how we sent the invitations as far as, you know, reaching back to who had acquired a new Miller truck. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we went back three years believe so yeah the, uh, three or four years right. so yeah. yeah and then yeah. we went to all of our distributors with that list and said we wanted to make sure that we were covering the bases correctly mm -hmm. um, you know we attempted in every way at this side to make sure that not only what we were doing with the, the background information that we had but also the fact that you know our dealers and and field reps were doing what they were responsible of taking care of their territory and that the invitations were sent to the right people <laughs> So was there an actual cap set for invitations? No, I mean there was a timeline set. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, you know we knew we ever told to the tower no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we just said, hey, we got to have them out by this date, and then, you know we, we, you know, you go two or three weeks, and then somebody says, man, they bought that truck just like four years and one day outside that list. How'd they get missed? You know, we and trust me. Everybody double, triple check that list, but you know, you just like you said earlier, you missed something that's right in front of you. So, um, you know, we we, we contact that person and just apologize and got them the uh, the invite. In many cases, they were able to come, and there were some people that just couldn't come because they had prior commitments as well. So, um, you know, we we never took a final attendance that night, but uh, we were. I think the uh, from what we got, RSVPs and the name tags left over because that was a nice way to judge it. We figured there was about twelve hundred people there. So wow. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, bus after bus after bus coming in. I mean, I stood out there and I tried to shake everybody's hand and just say welcome. You know, Will and Vince sat on the inside uh, trying to welcome everybody just to make sure that you got that many people, important people throughout the nation, or like John said, the world coming in. You want to make sure you say hi to everybody. Yeah. But you got five hours. You got five hours to try to do all this stuff. So you really only had about an hour and a half to try to say hi and connect with your friends and customers that are coming in so uh, it was critical that we you know kind of divided and conquered and said hi to everybody so uh, it, the evening went by to the to the actual start of the video or the unveil process it went by like it was a minute oh, yeah. and even though it was just you know an hour and a half or two hours so you, you know in in credit to the few days that we had to practice um, we practiced three days prior to the event and every day was a different way. And the whole point that we wanted to do is, from doing all of our trade shows in the past, we realized that we could not stall. The worst thing that you do when you're doing a recovery event 
is the waiting around for it. And this thing, when it came out of the, the compression chamber and rolled out there and then it was sat there for 15 minutes for pictures and a little bit of talk and a little bit more closing of the video, once it rolled into um, the, the show chamber 30, um, it was all set and ready to go. And there was no stopping at that point. And it went off like clockwork, but there was a lot of practicing and, you know, making sure that all of our rigging was correct, that the way that we approached it was correct. It was in a professional manner, um, you know, even down to the harnesses that uh, Brad and, and um, Bobby wore why they were up in the air. Just it was, and, and Will was just really, we kind of do, we had to do with a little bit of rigging the winches, which was, a, a, he, he didn't want that. He wanted the truck to come out like it was going to be right. I said, man, it takes a little, about 15 minutes to rig this thing to do that 110,000 pound lift. And uh, we don't have the time. It's got to come out with the snatch blocks in, in there. And we, we practiced it and we, we found that that's what we needed to do. So the, one thing, the one thing we didn't practice was having all those people and trying to <laughs> get them out <laughs> of control. the right. way. Yeah. That, that's the question I was just going to ask. That was just getting it out of the chamber was obviously a practice coordinated sure. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone wanted to flock to it, you know, and be the first to be right there, you know, at the truck. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, just making the turn out of there mm -hmm. looked really tight, and it, it looked like it was mapped out every every step out of there and over into the other. The other room there. We, said, we wanted it to look like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we told Mike there was no backing up. You know, we had to make it. It was the biggest tow truck ever unveiled. We wanted to make a left-hand turn and a right, and we didn't want to back up and yeah. doing it. And he didn't. He did a great job. We, well, it's funny because that, something like that can actually mean something. You know, oh, my gosh, look at this giant truck. Look how many times they had to wiggle that thing up. But to be able to come straight out, right? Yeah. you know, uh, was, was impressive there. Um, so, so the, we were discussing this show the other day and, and up until that point, I had never heard anything about a tank. <laughs> Tell us about the tank. <laughs> so, uh, well, I noticed, um, somebody on social media was like, man, that's awesome. You guys did that 1150 out front, the 4024. You guys should lift a tank. And I, I texted Jeff and I said, what's funny is we, we had a tank secured, um, and it took some mm -hmm. very strong connections in order to get that military tank. So we had it. Uh, John can probably give you a little more color on it, but it was it was close, and all of a sudden, just we get the text or the email saying it can't happen. So, yeah, you know, we we uh, with all the work that we've done and all the contacts that we've about you know established here in, in, in the U.S. market, and stumps the time Luciano has done with training in at Fort in in over in Virginia at Fort Lee, he had really gotten some high power people and and we had an opportunity to get an abrams tank and uh you know it was in excess of a hundred thousand pounds and we got down to the transport logistics and everything but during the point of bringing that tank out of georgia the general at the facility kept saying no no no, you know, it's not going to happen. And we kept going forward and thinking it, but he ended up winning and we yeah. lost. So I guess, I guess he's got that ability. Well, you know, it, <laughs> it, it, in general, you have those kinds yeah. of power. In the Perhaps. background, in the background, it, this is how far we had it. In the background, you had these massive overhead cranes. And I believe that one in the background was 400 tons. The one that you came out to was 500 tons. Right. So what we were going to do is, as the product was, as we were setting up the first demonstration, that crane was going to start to move because it does not go real quick. And it's going to have that, the, the Abrams in the air and transported to the M100 for its lift. And nobody was going to see that happening as it was happening. And just like coming out of that compression chamber, we were going to have that same feel like, holy cow, look at this thing. It's coming at us. Oh, it was it was disappointing, but you know we 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 just had to adapt, which is what towers do. They have to adapt. Um, as far as the demos go, I mean, well planned. They went real smooth, like you said. Not 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 many delays during there. But how about the the rigging? Was that rigging set up? Just well, for these demos? We wanted to accomplish a couple of different things. We didn't want to just do one lift or one demonstration. So we were trying to get a lot of weight with a lot of boom extension. Then we were just trying to get a lot of weight in the lift. And then we were kind of trying to get something in the middle to do that. So, um, you know, John can talk a little bit about the, the rigging that we, that we require, but we wanted to make sure that 
whatever we were doing was we were well within working load limits and we weren't you know the last thing you want to do is put on an event like this and then just have all you know the critics say well you didn't do this right or you missed that so we were double triple checking everything to make sure that we were spot on as far as that goes and we wanted to show kind of the verse not the versatility of it but the range of the of the machine and what it was able to do. The, the, the key part was is we wanted to be able to lift things that rolled because they had to, again, we're getting into that time point. We had to get it in and out of there and go from one event to the other. And uh, one of the things that we were wanted to do was lift a Volvo articulating uh, dumpster in it. And you know, it was right at that 80,000 pounds. And uh, we uh, attempted to do that. And as we all know, that it's very easy for that to swivel in the middle and the dump go one way in the engine to go the other yep. and so in trying to find center with all of that we just realized that the rigging wasn't going to it wasn't going to work and it was really dangerous on that point so that's when we started chasing the the, the front end loaders and uh, you know the point that we had very strong structural components of a front end loader you know we were uh, mr yates uh, was able to help us uh, locate the uh, 984 that was down out of uh, it was south of uh, uh, atlanta and got it up here and uh, we took the bucket off on purpose because the bucket was like 12 feet you know and and if, if you saw the display area we had it roped off and it would have wiped out the people because that's just how much reach that we had off to the side. So, and, and we had to work within the width prior, you know, criteria of, of the room that we were in. So, um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate Ashley Sling and Crosby and the team because uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock, we, we, yeah, we, we, we needed to replace straps. And uh, they went in there Sunday morning and made a new set of straps once we decided to go with this other lift and delivered them to them within two hours and all to fit that criteria. And without, without these team people, you know, it, it wouldn't have been able to happen. So so going back to the uh, rigging, I noticed that um, I th one thing I saw from the social media is somebody was questioning the snatch block sizes, you know, because you weren't there, you didn't hear the audio, but if you saw just the pictures, the, the sheer size of the M100 boom made the snatch blocks look tiny. So what they had, you know, if they're running 1140, 1150, even 1075, they're not used to those bigger snatch blocks. So they saw that and they're like, those aren't big enough, but they didn't realize how big the boom was. So... Um, you know, we had, uh, I think, Mike Frazier get online and some other people just say, hey, no, those were the correct size snatch blocks. So um, until you... Yeah, and, 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 and at about $4,300 our cost a piece, you know, that when you start getting up into that type of tonnage and uh, with, uh, again, with the Crosby product and its reputation on there, it, it uh, they, they, they make sure that we were doing it. We definitely did not cut any corners as far as cost. So the, um, the lifts, uh, did you consider doing the double truck lift like you did on the video a few weeks ago? You know, it... it well, we did it off the rear. Yeah. Um, we we missed were, that tank. We really yeah, missed that we, tank. We, we had to go. <laughs> the, the problem with the double truck, just watching it and the safety factor, is you start to get that swinging motion. And we just, with the space... Crowd. Crowd and and the, what and the crowd being so close, um, it just wasn't worth the risk. We knew we had opportunities to do the more weight around the sides and corners and roll with it. So um, we kind of wanted to show the features and benefits as it was, and then come back like we did just a few weeks ago and uh, show the more weight around the sides. So uh, yeah, we wanted to do it, but it just space it wasn't wasn't there for us. So. You know, in the, the, the presentations that we were able to do here, you know, uh, for the Florida show substitute and, and lifting that 100,000 pounds that we did and going from one side to the other, you got to realize that that's a lot of weight. And by taking two vehicles, one truck 41 and a half feet and the other truck some 25 feet, you to find a CG in the stability point, it's not like picking up a coil of steel, you know, or even that uh, uh, cat front end loader where the weight is more concentrated. You're spread out over a larger area, and as you go around the corner, that means that weight is further away from the center of the vehicle and therefore, you know, lends itself to being unstable. So that's one of the things that we kind of ended up saying, well, look, this will do it. Let's go ahead and, and uh, work with this combination now to get there. 
you know, we couldn't quite reach with the 4024 and, and the 1075 that we did. We couldn't quite reach that 100,000. We were right at 97,000 pounds. So we took Anthony Inglewood's truck and we picked up our counterweights and we exceeded it with our counterweights and we documented that on, off of the scale on there to make sure the weight ticket so that we did have that legitimate, you know, 100,000 pounds going around the corner. So two different applications when we did it. So you, you had these demos planned out. Was there anything, did anything have to be changed once you got in there and actually started setting up? Did you say, oh, wait a minute, we're going to have to do this a little different? Well, the one thing that uh, John brought up earlier was the timing of everything. And we, um, it was just a kind of a blessing in disguise that we actually had uh, the Insanas boom built. So we did change by bringing that boom down there on a uh, tractor trailer to help, you know, take time off the main floor, if you will, and direct attention over there to discuss the boom itself. So um, we did add a little bit of that. And Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge was we're, we're going to have to get the truck, the M100, out of the, the delivery bay or whatever you want to call it, and then into the demo bay, how we'd quickly hook up to the first casualty, and then what? how quickly can we move to the next one? Because as John was talking about, when you start... When you start lagging on time and you're you've got five minutes or six minutes of downtime, it doesn't seem like five minutes doesn't seem like a lot when it's just you. But when you've got a thousand people watching you, five <laughs> minutes they're starting to get distracted. And we've already been serving cocktails all day, so they're probably <laughs> you know they're they're losing interest fast. So that was the biggest challenge for us was how do we move quickly from the the hundred thousand pound lift to the you know to the eighty five thousand to the twenty five thousand and do all those quickly and safely and not have any time in between where you lose the where you lose ever the focus so that was you know just those things to and you know john never has trouble finding words to fill time so we could always just have john start talking for a little while as we were moving stuff around and and getting in the background he could give him a little uh a little something to listen to so well you know and and the one thing we wanted to do was in a very short period of time just show the capabilities of what the m100 could do by by you know taking that the amount of weight uh 74,000 or 72,000 whatever it was in the cat stopping traveling going forward backwards to show that didn't make a difference where you were in the position of the travel of the 147 some odd inches of the m100 there was no point of having to worry about lubrication or anything like that it would pick the load, stop the load, restart the load, and, and do all of it. Now, we had to go and take lifting these heavy, massive amounts of weight off the tailboard in the side to go into picking up the, the smaller front end loader and working that far off the front. And we do a lot of casual recoveries now off the front of the vehicle. And we wanted to show that we could do that re, uh, casualty over the front and then rotate it at full extension at 30 degrees and bring it all the way around the back. That means that truck had to be rigged differently than the first two lifts. So taking those three lifts and making no changes to the truck in order to be able to do that, uh, that was a little bit of study and play and, and to make that all happen. And, and uh, also a very critical part of what we wanted to do real quickly for that demo, as I said. So how many, how many people ended up being involved? I, I, obviously, there was the museum was involved, and, and uh, you mentioned Ashley, uh, those guys. I mean, how, how many people really came together to pull this event off? Man, I can't even start yeah. the count. Uh, if you look at the background of, of, of our vendors and suppliers, um, it's countless. It really is. Uh, and we wouldn't, I mean, we, we, we couldn't even make a list. Um, <laughs> and, you know, in the museum, being able to be here in town, and we brought them over, that was just a cool little added flavor. Um, you know, there's people that have, have been to Chattanooga or just pick up a truck, and they don't have time to go to the museum. So um, even just bringing uh, the, uh, the, the replica of the first truck, and plus our... Uh, I believe it was a 440 that did the Talladega speed record. It was a mm -hmm. cool backdrop back there, and um, so it was cool to show people that. And on the other side, we also brought in Chattanooga whiskey. They um, they had a fun time and uh, showing people some of the local yeah. flavor from here in, uh, in Chattanooga as well. So I, total number of people, I mean hundreds. I mean if you yeah. XR staff, if you just say all our suppliers and vendors, I mean hundreds. So and and, and it, it, it some of the feedback that we got from people that had done unveiling shows 
Uh, we had both of the managers for the pack car companies in Kenworth and, and Peterbilt. Uh, we had uh, the president of, of Cummins in here. We had uh, senior management from Whalen uh, that were was here. Um, and you know, these people had been to fire trucks and, and their own unveils in, in Vegas for the T2000 or the 567 or, you know, whatever. And when they came up to you after the demonstration and everybody went back to the social event and said to you, well, they've never ever seen a presentation with that much more power and, and enthusiasm, it, that really meant a lot to everybody that was involved to pull this thing off, uh, you know, starting from Kip's team all the way down through engineering and, and sales and, and, and just the whole vision that Will outlined when, you know, that opening video about being on the airplane and, and flying home from Baltimore. So the, uh, the swag that you guys gave out, uh, I didn't realize until after the event that that stuff was specific for the attendees of the event, correct? Yeah, it was. We, um, we had the luxury of being able to have a great supplier here in town to get us some uh, items, and we kind of based it on uh, the attendee numbers. Um, we wanted to create something that you just couldn't go get. Um, you know, if um, you know, we had a couple leftovers we gave away a couple weeks ago on a, on a contest with uh, Mike Frazier using the M100 to tow something. Um, but yeah, that was it. It was uh, you had to attend the event to get it. So um, even if you were invited but you didn't attend, it it was just one of those things, cool things, and um, customers really appreciate that. It, you know, they again, like John said earlier, it's humbling. I think it was about. Four hours before the event, we were at lunch, and man, this person I, I saw last night downtown, they flew in from here, and it's just, they come all the way for five hours. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we wanted something special for them who made the effort. And I know people wanted to come, but they had prior commitments with family trips and stuff like that. But, uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool, so. Yeah, I, if, if anybody's watched any of the videos from the podcast, you see... Uh, you see, Brad's gotten some heavy mileage out of his M100 uh, mug there. I don't, I never know quite what's in that mug, but uh, I know he uses it quite a bit. He told me apple bourbon. juice. <laughs> Always bourbon. Um, yeah, that's my that's my favorite cup. Um, you know, it's an out of town out of town project going on, so I wasn't able to attend. So this is cool to kind of get the behind the scenes and and to, to see what really went into it. Um, I can't imagine. You know, we talked to. Clarissa at Toe Times about putting on a toe show and the amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that nobody knows about. So, I, you know, I have to think this is basically the same. And the level of work is is crazy, I'm sure. With all that going on, there has to be some funny stories and some bloopers, though, right? A oh, funny story right now is I'm getting my phone blown up by Rick and Santa, <laughs> <laughs> who's got M100 number two up there and is already doing that. So, you know, it, it's kind of unique that you got your client calling you and, and you're talking about his very product on there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay, stories, any, any, any interesting stuff, uh, anything involving Billy's leg? I mean... <laughs> I so, thought we weren't going to talk about that. I mean, uh, I wasn't there. I um, my son had a baseball tournament that weekend, but I I called. Uh, I can't remember if it was Todd or Joseph, and I said, "Hey, it's uh, five o'clock on a Sunday. I can head back down there." And one of them said, uh, "Yeah, we're just getting back down to Big Blue. Um, we just left the ER." And my heart dropped. You think, "Uh oh, what? what somebody happened? fell yeah, off a truck?" Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. we we go to enough trade shows and getting the truck's prepped and washed that we've had an accident or two over the 15 years I've been here. Nothing major, but somebody has broken their arm. So I'm thinking someone fell off a truck or something fell on somebody. And I said, uh-oh, who, who, who's her who fell? And he, I think it was Todd. It was I, yeah. I'm, I'm remembering the laugh now. So Todd, why don't you just tell him what... <laughs> Tell them what happened from a, uh, you were there, right? I, I, I was there. I, I did not witness the event, however. Uh, I missed out on the event itself. I, uh, I had gone over to check on the demo team to see how uh, preparations were coming along. And um, I found, uh, found Mr. Billy Drain laying in the floor, holding his leg in a Writhing huge in amount of pain. Huge amount of pain. Um, <clears throat> Billy, uh, so we needed a pen. We were we were doing our, our setup. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here it is. Here it is. And we were documenting. We were documenting all the demonstrations. And so, I mean, part of the practice and the planning was that we were, you know, going to line this out. We had it. It was scripted more or less. So, we needed a pen. And and my vehicle was maybe a hundred yards away from where we were standing. And 
uh, Bobby Tudors is one of our uh, employees at PDI was was standing next to me and I said well I just need a pen he said well there's one in my truck and I said I'll go get it he said no no I'll go get it and I said I'll race you there oh and <laughs> you know 38 39 year old grown men foot racing on concrete is not a good not a good mixture we made it about 30 yards and I slipped and I either slipped or pulled my hamstring I'm not sure but I went down and ended up tearing my ACL, my LCL, and breaking my fibula the all in one deal. So this was, you know, two days before the event, and I'm uh, I'm in bad shape. <laughs> Todd takes me to the ER, ER. Mm-hmm. and it's just it was downhill from there. So they gave me that nice leg brace. I, I muscled through it on a crutches and a hover around. And the jazzy. And, I don't know. Call yes. it, yeah, call it seven months later from from that <laughs> event. I'm I'm finally getting around. Um, like the uh, person that I was before, but it was uh, it was definitely a humbling experience. So, so <laughs> something you, you hate to have to happen two days before an event mm-hmm. like that. So, so I see even your jazzy scooter is blue. Yeah, the, the, kept somehow the there, we had one of those up here at the plant. <laughs> I don't have no idea blue. why we would ever have one of those, but they brought that down for me, so I wouldn't have to walk around too much. And I, I mean, I faked it pretty good through the event. I had to put that brace underneath my jeans, and yeah. I don't think most people knew. I, I was pretty stationary though the most of the night, so I just <laughs> I hung in one spot and tried to keep people from uh, knocking me over. <laughs> It's funny, you, you would think that, hey, the crutches are just fine, but you'll notice that um, that facility had a lot of go- golf carts and stuff like that. So you're setting up and you're walking everywhere. It's a lot of walking. And I remember Fraser coming up to me and after the um, one of the setup days. He's like, oh, he looked at his step counter on his phone, and he was primarily working in Bay 30, which was a demo bay, and he had let's just call it 15,000 steps. And so I was like, man, that's pretty good, you know, and his average was 10,000 or something like that. So he goes, what is yours? I'm like, I don't have mine set up. And so he goes, oh, it'll count you. Just go ahead and log into your health. I had like 45,000 steps because I never got on a golf cart and I'd walk from one bay to the next and you don't realize how far it is. So, you know, you, you get on the crutches and we were kind of giving Billy a hard time, but I mean, you can't walk that much normally. Yeah. And it was like, he on the crutches, I couldn't imagine. So um, yeah, they, they brought the golf cart down there for him and then that thing and we just, you know, had a good chuckle at it. We still do, obviously. <laughs> so, you know, he didn't want to bring that up, but thanks for bringing it up, Jeff. Yeah, no problem. No <laughs> problem. Hover around. You know, hover around. Who needs but, friends when you have guys like this? On you your got side? it, man. We're here for you. <laughs> So obviously there's going to be some uh, new stuff in the future. You guys are always looking ahead, always thinking, looking outside the box. So I'm not going to ask about what trucks are next, but has the bar been set with these types of events? I don't know that you guys expect to put another event like this on anytime soon, but is there going to be more of this style of events from you guys, you think? I mean, I would think when the V202 comes out, we'd have to do something like this. <laughs> <laughs> April Fools. Here goes the internet. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, it, it's it was. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to. You know, our our team here would like to. Whenever we used to, man, we've done rotator schools for 15 years. I don't know how many we've done total, but when you do stuff in Chattanooga, there's that history here. You can tie in the museum. Um, we can show off our our factory here. You know, we obviously have two other facilities here in the U.S. But um, you know, bringing people into Chattanooga uh, for an experience and and the town itself. Forget what we have to offer, but um, just it's a great town. So. You know, who knows what's going to be down the down the road? But I I'd like to see some some more maybe private unveils here in Chattanooga or stuff like that going forward. So um, again, the response was awesome. So why not? It worked. So yeah, I I remember a lot of discussions online was uh, boy, this was so great. We got to do this every year. And I'm thinking to myself, that's impossible. <laughs> Probably yeah. took damn near a year to plan this one, and and you want to. But w- the cool side of that was. There was like the sense of camaraderie. People were saying we all need to get together like this a lot more often. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty cool to see that happen. Yeah, you know, and and I think that um, it, it's we've done 
We have some things down the road, and uh, the impact of the M100 uh, brought all of those people and put them in that one room. It kind of goes back to my early days with uh, the, the founding of uh, not only PWF but TRAA, and you know that point where it changed the industry, where the West Coast could talk to the East Coast. Uh, people from uh, the Dakotas knew somebody in Louisiana, and, and now with on on the large wrecker side with heavy haul transportation being such a critical part of what we do it brought people together that you know in one room that sometimes just do phone business from distancing but what what kind of brought this whole industry from you know the the founding of these associations in the late 70s and early 80s together again so it, it would be hard to do and and uh but uh you know we've got some neat things down at R&D right now. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> V202. <laughs> I don't know to sit there to say something that, that, that's going to be uh, it's going to be unique. Let's just put it that way. Oh man, you just broke the internet oh. again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was one of the funniest things about leading up to this event was it's like everybody knew what it was going to be but nobody had any clue of what it was going to be. Yeah. And I, I don't know how that worked. I love seeing the post <laughs> saying, oh, something just happened. It won't be at the Florida show. And we're, we're all sitting here laughing. Cause we, there wasn't maybe one second of a conversation about it being at Florida no. show. So no. um, when people were, were saying that, hey, it's going to be at Florida show or just going to miss Florida show, it was like, yeah, they, they don't know, which is funny to see. So you're right. People knew what it was going to be, but they had no clue. I, I believe Mr. Petrop was about the only person. I mean, it was his truck. He sent yeah. that truck down here. Yeah. Well before we actually started mounting it. Paid so, for it, yeah. So, um, you know, he was the only one that had actually saw some of the build process. And he actually went down and saw um, Big Blue with us um, just to kind of get his eyeballs nice. on it. So, um, you know, yeah, it's, who knows what we're going to have in the future. Um, you know, that building is for sale, so maybe, uh, maybe someone can... Uh, <laughs> can buy it and we'll move down there and have some more parties to be fun there you go there was a lot of internet drama there was uh i'm not going to name names of tow companies but uh somebody said that you know we were out testing with the unit and and you know as close as you are to miller how come you don't know what's going on and i literally had to bring you know those people up here and walk them around to say that who's ever feeding you full of bulla is you know that that that's it, and it was tough you know uh uh, we have a very competitive uh, nature here within our small little community of Chattanooga, and when we, we still had to maintain that with everything that was coming out, and and uh, you know, so uh, there was uh, a lot of things being said about how far along we were with the M100 or expectations that we just kind of laughed about, you know. But that was the main thing: is the talk was out. Yeah. You know. Well, the uh, this has been interesting, guys. And uh, you got anything else you want to throw in? Any any more rumors you want to start? Like uh, Troublemaker John over here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I want to just say to the marketing team that took uh, Will's lead and uh, worked in the timeline uh, to pull this off and to have those people, like I mentioned, that have been to major trade shows and major unveils uh, in the trucking industry to said that by far we had set the bar on top of that. That And you know that the, for the vast majority of all the work that we've done uh, in, in what we've seen with the, uh, uh, the work that we've done here in this uh, April market and replacing the, the Florida trade show, um, it just, uh, it, it, it we just got a great team, but you know, we work damn hard to get where we are. Things just don't happen and say that, you know, Miller dominates this or does that. We work our fanny off to do what we do. So I'm just proud of everybody that touched uh, the event on October the 1st and uh, everything that we've done over here for this uh, virus thing and, and trying to bring our product to everybody during the, the shutdown of the world. Fantastic. Jeff, I just want to thank uh, you and Brad and the Tub Business Podcast for having us on and and sharing, um, you know, a little, I guess, insight in our company and what in just this one event. Um, you guys have been a great partner in that. And, you know, when Kip was telling me about this, I thought, man, what are we going to talk about? You know, I mean, how is it even exciting to anybody else? And then, um, you know, as we as we know, doing these things, as you start 
you know, talking through all the different things that that happened, it's like, oh yeah, I, for, I kind of forgot about mm-hmm. that, you know. And, and just rehashing it, and as John said, you know, watching the pictures and seeing how this thing went down, uh, you know, it brings back really cool memories and gives you goosebumps yep. on you know something that you were a part of. And yep. uh, so thanks for awesome. thanks for doing this and, Thank you. and letting us be a part of it. We appreciate it. All right, and, and I just want to say one thing. This ain't no simple put-together program. You must have, I don't know how many thousands of dollars here in wires and connections and everything like that. This is, this is a, a project in itself. Well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping to get that phone call Joe Rogan got about a week ago where we get that $100 oh, yeah. million dollar offer. So we're, we're trying to at least look the part. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you, you've put more than 100% into it. So for you guys, you. Uh, Brad, Brad, congratulations on what you do because it's, it's impressive. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so, for having yeah, us we, up here. We, so I we think thank the, you guys. It, it wouldn't be possible without yeah. without partners like you guys. That, that stuff's not cheap. The equipment to put out a quality product. Um, yep. You know, our goal is just to help unite the towing industry, but we need the proper equipment to put out good good content to do that. So we appreciate you guys and uh, tagging us along or bringing us along and involving us on on things like this and the reveal and uh, the tow show videos and all that. So that relationship we appreciate very much absolutely yeah. uh who who wants to finish it up with the uh winners here yeah we need a drum roll right. <laughs> don't pound on the table yeah exactly don't hit the table too hard um yeah so we had a, a pretty amazing response online for um this latest contest that we did so we we chose 15 um winners that that shared the post and liked the post and um i'll just go down the list real quick here and we'll follow up with you guys on social media so if you if you if you uh, hear your name or think it might be you, we'll be sending you a message here here pretty soon. Uh, the first winner is J L. He's in Inner Grove Heights, or I'm sorry, Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. Then Jake L. Uh, no relation. In uh, <laughs> Somerset, P A. Josh C. Out of Dayton, Ohio. Francis H. Out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Chris A. In Archibald, P A. Brandon L. in McHenry, Illinois. Timothy T. in Irving, Massachusetts. Roger X. out of uh, Mukwanago, Wisconsin. I'm sure I butchered that, so I apologize. <laughs> I would have done worse. <laughs> uh, Zach B. out of Nebraska City, Nebraska. Uh, Billy G. in Northport, Alabama. Jason D. in Marietta, Georgia. Um, Jonathan G. in Quebec. Denny C. in Strattonville, Pennsylvania, Bryce B. in Mobile, Alabama, and Kurt W. Uh, Bryce. in Lazella, Georgia. Liza- I've, ne- uh, I've never even heard of Lazella, Lizella, Georgia. Georgia. I probably butchered the pronunciation of it, too. <laughs> Lazella wasn't uh, the Almond Brothers from, I think, where that was... I don't know. I don't know. It's yeah. Highway 41. Yeah, right that's there. a yeah. sit there. I yeah. know <laughs> I'm dating myself again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, congratulations yeah, to congratulations, everybody who guys. won. Yeah, thanks for sharing awesome. and uh, helping us get the word out and appreciate everyone's participation. All righty. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate thanks, Brad. It. I appreciate it. You've been listening to the Tow Business Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it five stars and go back to listen to previous episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and like us on social media. If you have a suggestion or question for the show, please email us at info at towbusinesspodcast.com or send us a message on social media. And remember, there's no business like Tow Business.